And then the next thing we knew, we were back home, just surrounded by the stuff we didn't need. The 100 Greatest TV Ads, sponsored by The Sunday Times. Oh, hello. Do you have a copy of Behind the Showbiz Smile, My Secret Heartbreak by John Norton? Oh, you do? Marvellous. My name? Yes. It's G.R. Norton. Oh, uh, just put it to one side. I'll, I'll send a man round. Thanks. Hello. Did you know that by the time we reach 35, we've seen 150,000 TV commercials? That's 75,000 minutes, or two months of your entire life. It all breaks down into one whole week fantasizing about fabric conditioner, three and a half days ogling oven chips, and one very long afternoon of Griff Reese Jones in an embarrassingly fake ginger beard. I mean, do you remember these? <laughs> these mates condom. Do you want a flake in that, love? I love it. Now for a good workout, they go! Bob! If you see Sid, tell him. I think that he's eating. Oh, shut up! You know who. Well, no, no careful. I think you'll agree, they're great. Well, you must do, because they were some of the 100 greatest ads ever shown on British TV, as decided upon by the first ever public poll of its kind. Yes, thousands upon thousands of Channel 4 viewers and newspaper readers took part and voted for their favorite TV ads. But ads don't just exist in a shaken vacuum. Mmm, they really do reflect the story of 20th century Britain. So, over the next two and a half hours, we'll be delving into the stories behind some of those mini historical masterpieces, as memorable as the programs they so rudely interrupted. I can't tell the difference between Wizzo Butter and this dead crab. <laughs> yes, you know, we find that nine out of ten British housewives can't tell the difference between Wizzo Butter and a dead crab. Hey, it's nice to find somebody who hasn't chosen Stork SB. <laughs> Can I ask you why? It's just that it tastes better. You'd like to take part in the taste test? Oh, yes, certainly would, yes. The Stork campaign um, with the Vox Pops featuring Leslie Crowther were fantastically successful in their day. I mean, his, his popularity at those times, he was like the sort of Michael Barrymore of his era. I mean, everybody loved Leslie Crowther. What Sheila's going to do now is to spread two pieces of bread, one with the margarine of your choice and yeah. the other with Stork SB. He did no, go into supermarkets and he did sort of start now chatting up women in the aisles about their margarine, which is a pretty bizarre thing to do. And it hadn't really been done that way before. Give it a taste, give it a whirl, right? So it was a very cost-efficient campaign and a very successful campaign. Um, and in a sense, it sort of relished in its own cheesiness. But the problem is nowadays, you know, you have got a, a much more cynical audience than in those days. And, you know, the first question that would be going through people's heads, I suspect, nowadays is how much were those people paid? Take that one there. Why? It tastes a lot better than the other one. It's the other one you've been eating all this time. <laughs> but it's got to be Stork SB from now on, isn't it? Oh, definitely, yes. You try that around here, young man, and we'll slit your face. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Mill workers used to call the Yorkshire Terriers the sideboard or chest of draw dog. What are you people like out there? Top voters or pedigree chumps? Whatever. Some of you wanted another chance to see a lot of mad, hairy rats having their dinner at number 99. Terrier and the tiny tide that she's known to be. Flying attack squadrons off his carrier deck. Landing a helicopter strike force. Counting down to blast off for the moon. To a boy and his Meccano, all things are possible. When you look at the Meccano ads now, they are quite interesting in that they remind you of a more innocent age when a young lad could think of nothing more exciting to be than to be involved in the sexy and glamorous world of civil engineering. A boy and his Meccano turns a boy's world into a man's world. But in a kind of post-Liam Gallagher, David Beckham age, it doesn't 
doesn't really seem to have that much glamour to it. Make hundreds of rugged working models. It's one of those things where, of course, the toys have got much, much better. And you can try and give interest to a kid today with a few quarter inch screws, and quite rightly they'll say, no, get lost. Can't we, have, uh, can't we have the internet instead? And I think they'd be right. Meccano. Now you can start being an engineer even younger. This little foot will get corns and bunions if a shoe's too tight across here. So this ad at number 97 shows how times have changed. It picked up award after award back in the 1970s. These days, it's more likely to get the ad makers a visit from the NSPCC. That poor child was probably scarred for life. These are our shoes. I don't know about you, but I do love a baby shab. Makes a quite nice mixer. But now, while I take care of these fellas, why don't you have a one-to-one -one with one of Britain's leading comedy thespians? Yes, we caught up with that fine comic actor Peter Kay during a rare break from rehearsal on his latest TV production. I'm just doing this, Dougie. Five minutes. Jim, when you were completely great, you did look much older. Ultra bright gets you noticed. I'd like to introduce you to a new kind of hostess. Spread basic slag. I was a victim of advertising, definitely. I think it's, it's difficult not to be lured in by the lies of the adverts when you're a kid. He's sensational! Very tempting at Christmas as well, with wall-to-wall -wall toy ads for wobbling weebles and wrist races. Afternoon, Willie. Have you seen my new animals? Oh, look, Granny. They wobble just like us. Oh, yeah, you succumb to the pressure. It's, it's unbearable. Six million dollar man, ready to operate and command. Control his amazing lifting strength. See through his wide angle bionic eye. And ripping up for action, here's our star. What a jump! Wise, oh wise, who, who, had, who had a desert? Nobody I knew. He's Evo Knievel. All I had for Jumpo was a poof in the front room and my dad slippers when he was asleep. Betty Ann Nitter, the ideal Christmas gift. My family loved unbeatable bargains. This knife is really dull. Can't tell Majestic Sharpener sharpens your knives this fast and easy way. A new multi-purpose opener. Easily adjusts to open all size jar tops. Useless, all of it. Crap. You didn't need it. Stop littering. Some of those empty bottles can be valuable. That's not littering. That's violence. k Tao bottle cutter. I can't begin to describe the hours of fun we had turning a Nuki Brown bottle into a vase. As a drink tumbler or a vase, even a unique ashtray. I do remember the hours we spent in casualty on Mother's Day when my nana's mouth cut to ribbons because my dad had tried to make her an handy drinking cup. Now, another tumbler to add to your match set. Then he tried making it up to my nan by buying her a Shackleton's high seat chair. It's grand to find a comfortable chair when you're getting on a bit or you've got arthritis. My niece got this from Shackleton's, you know. Shackleton's original high seat. They'd over a hundred chairs to choose from. They had 96 left when my dad had finished. He bought one for the whole family, bought one each. They were great for your back. Introducing k -Tel's Hair Magician. And if my dad were gadget man then, my mum was a hygiene appliance freak. By just combing, it will trim and taper longer hair, cut and taper shorter hair quickly and safely. But it's, it saves us a fortune at the hairdressers, Peter. I'd say, but it hurts! You know, and it, it, it's even more good at school looking like John Mills in Ryan's daughter. Teenagers can now have the latest cuts in only minutes with k -Tel Hair Magician. This is a wig. This. Do you find brushing clothes tiresome? Well, here's your answer. Brushomatic, very, very clever piece of equipment, that. Cleans up holstery in the home and car quickly. The way you could brush all that dog hair back onto your coat if need be. To clean, simply brush backwards. Lasts for years. A finger or fart is just enough to give your kid a treat. My favourite adverts, sing-along adverts. A finger of fart is just enough until it's time to eat. It's full of cabaret goodness and very small and neat. A finger of fart is just enough to give your kids a treat. Dougie, are you on? Ready for me now? Sorry. I've lost 22 pounds since I bought this. And I haven't felt like eating once. It's the Vibrate. <laughs> you lose weight body belt. And it's a steal for only $21.99. From KTEL. <laughs> Shut me ass, this Andre. It's not funny, Marjorie. 
Take one panet of Sainsbury's strawberries and... Back to the chart now. And if a Mr. Michael Douglas is watching tonight, the good news is your future wife sorted out the pudding. Oh, and don't worry about the main course. She says she's already got something in the oven. Irresistible. There's a fragment that's here today and they call it Charlie. It was this incredibly naff, cheap scent that was so huge during the 70s, probably on the back of um, shows like Charlie's Angels, you know, that's probably where it got its name from. Charlie. Everybody wanted to be Farrah Fawcett. Kind of young, kind of now, Charlie. Kind of free, kind of wow, Charlie. You kind of imagined that it would be the sort of perfume she wore until you smelt it and realised that it smelt like old ladies' wee. Kind of fragrance that's gonna stay and it's here now, Charlie. Old ladies' we? Come on, wearing Charlie's bound to lead to a good life. Talking of which, here's Penelope Keith at number 94. Young ladies, your final and most important lesson. How to spend Daddy's lovely money. Checkbooks open, girls. Pens are ready. No, 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 Felicity. You couldn't possibly go shopping in Knightsbridge with one of those. A pen with style, a pen with elan, a Parker lady in white rolled gold. Moths just seem to roll from its tip. Signatures flow with a flourish. Now then, all together, girls. Yes, Celia? Madame, does one spell pence with an S or a C? I don't think you need worry about that, my dear. At number 93, those marketing men at Timex were bootlegging the Beatles while Oasis were still in nappies. Who did they went and made all the watches upside down? Britain's first ever ad from the opening night of ITV in 1955 is at number 92 in our chart. It's Gibbs SR toothpaste, the tingling fresh toothpaste that does your gums good too. There was a little party in my flat because not everybody had television. They came to watch television that first night and of course we were absolutely amazed when, oh, there's ours, oh, it's our ad. The tingle you get when you brush with SR is much more than a nice taste. It's a tingle of health. I remember my boss and friend saying, I think you're crazy, Brian. It'll never be a major medium. I think people thought it might be just a flash in the pan or take a very long time to get going. It tells you something very important, that you're doing your gums good and toughening them to resist infection. You must remember that advertising, it was seemed very new and very strange and rather American, and it seemed a great pity that we were going to have to pay for watching television programmes by having to put up with advertising. And somehow the feeling was that it wasn't quite for you. The tingle in SR comes from sodium ricinoleum. We had this uh, press campaign, and we needed to translate it into television and to make it move and to make it uh, real in visual terms. Tingling fresh to the first couple of shots were done with a real block of ice, but when we got into close-up, it would have been too misty shooting through the ice, so we in fact were shooting through a block of plastic. And brush with SR, the tingling fresh toothpaste for teeth and gums. At number 91, it's Arthur Daly himself, George Cole, getting into a bit of Barney rubble while moonlighting as a spy in Istanbul. Where's Dennis Waterman when you need him? cigars from Benson and Hedges. When the Italians aren't waving their hands around, they're waving their food around. Alan Wicker, that great travelling documentary man, toured the world for Britain and Barclay Card back in the 80s. Angus Dayton must have still been searching for his passport. People have written to me 
or to be honest, one man has sent me a postcard saying, if this new stuff is so beneficial to dogs and full of meaty goodness, why doesn't Henry look more lively on it? Why doesn't he bound about and wag his tail? Well, Henry's got a very alert mind. A double diamond works wonders, works wonders, works wonders. A double diamond works wonders, so drink one today. Strand commercial was made in 1959 using a young actor called Terence Brook, and his character was actually modelled on Frank Sinatra in Pal Joey, a very popular movie at the time. And the idea was this lone individual moving through the mean streets of London, full of shadows and sort of sleazy bars where it was always four o'clock in the morning. Very much an American idiom. And this became an enormously popular commercial. I mean, people would wait for the next strand of the Strand commercial to come out. The problem with it was it actually didn't move any packets of cigarettes. And the post-mortem's conclusion was that people missed the message. The message was, you're never alone with a strand. They saw it as, you're always alone with a strand. And whilst they were intrigued by the character, they couldn't identify with the character. Remember, 1959 was an enormously conformist era in, in British social history. It, it was only 14 years after the war had ended. People didn't want to step outside society. They wanted to be very much a part of society. People didn't want to be thought of, to be alone, I suppose. The concept just didn't happen. But it sold thousands of records. And this is before the days when um, commercials were, were transferred into the pop market. This was the very first one. And I went into the studio and did a, um, a three-minute version of it, and it went into the hip read, believe it or not. So although it wasn't good for Strand, it was good for me. You're never alone with a Strand. The cigarette of the moment. Do the shake and and put the freshness back. Ooh, just one application removes all traces of blood, sweat, tears, gravy, egg, and embarrassing understains. Oh, what a weekend that was, eh? Oh, do excuse me while I do a bit of much needed spring cleaning. I'll be right back after the break. Do the shake and the shake and Okay, okay, the camera's on. But well, why is it all blurred? I don't know, it's not my camera. Where's the logo? Look, you can't have an ad without a logo. I found a place full of charms A magic world in my baby's arms Her soft embrace like satin and lace Wondrous place mm -hmm. A wondrous place Sorry about the blank screen. We don't actually make ads, you see. Zenith Media. Was that ten seconds? Take it easy this Easter with my family feaster. All you gotta shell out is $9.99. Well, we know it's not exactly an award winner. Zenith Media. Our job's putting ads in all the right places. Hello. No, thank you. Something missing? Whatever you're looking for on the internet, Lycos retrieves it. Lycos goes to extraordinary lengths to dig up exactly what you need. Lycos, your personal internet guide. Lycos.co.uk what Tony appreciates about DHL is that they always solve his problems. So he feels more relaxed, as does his daughter, their neighbour's dog too. So now the dog doesn't bark as much at night, the neighbours are more relaxed, and so are their families and their friends. Everyone is more relaxed. DHL, we keep your promises. 
home base are hammering down prices. Price is hammered, Leslie. We're hammering up to 20% off the price of all wooden garden furniture. Ooh. And these? Oh. We're hammering up to 20% off the price of all lawnmowers. Great prices. They've been hammered. And we're hammering up to 25% off the price of all power drills. Price hammered. Price hammered. 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 And with double spend and save points this Saturday, hammered. you're better off at home base. Not tonight. <laughs> oh, you are such a wicked woman. OK, yeah, yeah. They, uh, they want the contracts by tomorrow morning. Don't wait up. He'll be with you in ten. Thanks, Kate. I really appreciate it. Yes! Penny Vincenzi's Almost a Crime. Make space for it. The best TV ads ever. 46 classic TV ad themes from the greatest television commercials. Remember those catchy little tunes that inspired you to buy cars, soup and jeans? Well, they're all here on... The best TV ads ever. Buy your glasses at Donald and Aitchison and get a free pair of prescription sunglasses. Marvellous. Welcome back to this ad man's heaven, this perfect picture of product placement. You know, a lot of people ask me if I was truly wafted here from paradise. And I say, no, Birmingham International Airport. Luton was fog bound. Never mind, time for takeoff again. Even before the Falklands and the miners' strike, we couldn't let Maggie go. In this instance, the Maggie in question wasn't a basket case, but model Emily Jones. Strange place to have a picnic, I always thought. The waiter service must be terrible. Only 40 calories a slice, or less. Now I'm a going back a few years When partners knew a bit about beer If it weren't a pint of best That's when you'd hear this strange protest Dave Trott, my writer at the time, spent an evening on the Isle of Dogs in a pub. And he came back the next morning with a tape of this couple of pub entertainers called Chaz and Dave. Good you little, you know what I mean? It mean, just means get out of it. It's just a, a good word. We, uh, we wrote it just for, to make our family sort of laugh, I think, at the time. Well, it came from the song, really, the idea. We were trying to sell the beer as a traditional old beer, just like it was in the 30s. And uh, they got spit and sawdust on the floor and, you know, old caps. And we tried not to glamorise it. We tried to shoot it as if it had been shot in the 30s. Now I'm a going back a few years When partners knew a bit about beer It's only 30 seconds long, but it's one single take. We brought in a, a very well-known black and white feature lighting cameraman called Robert Kraska who was in retirement um, to do it. We wanted really meticulous black and white lighting. He was a man who, met, who had lit the third man for Carol Reed. He was in his 70s and he came back onto the set with his jod person. He didn't have a whip but it was that kind of uh, feeling. And he took all morning, I mean into the afternoon, to light it. We had one day to shoot it. When I arrived on the set I thought it was awful. You know, it, well, every person had about ten shadows around them and it looked awful. When we saw it in black and white on the rushes, it looked fantastic. So he, re he really knew what he was doing. Can there have been a more homoerotic 40 seconds ever in the history of British television? There's a lot of towel flicking, there's a lot of uncomfortable looking, joshing with each other, knocking each other around. It's a boiling, 
boiling sea of homoeroticism. I can't believe it got past. Good work out there, Henry. And after a good workout, nothing beats, beats a great, great smell of Britain. Britain. Here, you try the muscle on my act. Yeah, why don't you throw the towel, Henry? Good job. <laughs> Route 33, the deodorant with muscle. What is Cointreau? Cointreau? Inimitable chef d'oeuvre. Literally a masterpiece that cannot be equaled. Um, D'équilibre entre la vivifiante. A delicate balance between the living warmth of the spirit. You follow? Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, les vertus amères des oranges murillas. Ah, you say and the bitter virtues, virtues, yes, of oranges ripened under the tropical sun. Voila, that is Cointreau. <laughs> going well. I'm going shell. Good heavens, I know that voice. I'm going well on shell, shell, shell. It's Bing Crosby. Britain is great. Well, let's see it in state. You can be sure for of shell. Bring me home some fruit. The first known case of pester power is at number 81. Indeed, the authorities thought this ad so dangerous that Roundtree's had to change the slogan from Don't Forget the Fruit Gums Mom to Don't Forget the Fruit Gums Chum. Don't forget the fruit gums, Mom. Throughout this programme, we're bringing you the 100 greatest ads ever shown on British TV. But what about those classics that are the bad manners to be made and shown abroad? We sent perky Caledonian minx Gail Porter around the world in 180 seconds to take a global view of some classic ads you won't have seen. Well, unless you're Alan Wicker. When it comes to our favourite TV ads, we Brits stick to our own. Sure, we've had flings with fancy foreigners like those smoothies, Victor Kayam and the Italian ambassador. But on the whole, we are a nation of Smash fans and Yorkie lovers. But we are not the only ones capable of making fantastic commercials. Yanks do it, Swedes do it, even Finns and Japanese do it. We just don't get to see most of them. OK, you and travel plans. I need to be in New York on Monday, LA on Tuesday, New York on Wednesday, LA on Thursday, New York on Friday. Got it? Got it. Got it. So you want to Work here. What really makes you think you deserve a job? Here? Well, sir, I think on my feet I'm good at figures and I have a sharp mind. Excellent. Can you start on Monday? Yes, sir, absolutely, without hesitation. Congratulations, welcome aboard. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And in conclusion, Jim Bill, Bob, Call Fred, Low Dork, Ape and Ted. Congratulations on your deal in Denver, Dave. I'm putting you down to deal with Dallas. Don, is it a deal? Do we have a deal? It's a deal. I gotta go, I got a call coming in. National Neo High Top, Coso Virni Chosen. This death-defying and very slow climb up a skyscraper in Osaka was so popular with Japanese kids in the 1980s that shops sold hundreds of thousands of models of that diminutive, incontinent firefighter. To you and me, this means brown bread, bikes, flat caps and ticking bread tip. Top it, world. But ask TV viewers in Spain what it reminds them of, and they'll tell you a shaggy dog story. This ad for Spanish telly made a star of a pooch called Pippin, and after this award-winning performance, he turned his paws to literally hundreds of TV ads, a sort of canine Carol Vorderman, if you will. If your best friend leaves home, it may be because you're watching too much television. Learn to watch television sensibly. Now, the only ad you might expect those Eurovision flops, the Norwegians, to be good at is one for the new Fjord Escort. <laughs> well, I'd give this example of the Norwegian ad man's art a lot more than Null Bois. Despite challenges from around the world, America is the undisputed heavyweight champion of TV commercials. And that's no surprise when you consider TV advertising began in America 
eons ago, when buying Charlie still meant a trip to Boots perfume counter, and Maureen from driving school was applying for her provisional license. All right, now let's see if we can find first. No, that's not it. <laughs> Believe me, it's in there somewhere. Turn left. I can't do it while you're watching me. Uh, okay, turn left. No, 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 no. How does it feel the first time out in traffic, Mr. Moss? Mr. Moss? Mr. Moss? Should I turn the windshield wiper on? At this point, it looks like the rebels are going to outlast the teachers. And now, back to those 100 greatest TV ads. And at number 80, it's Ben, Mary, and some burger envy. Hello. My name's Mary. At that point in time, no one was going further than London to actually cast commercials. A floppy says to my beef burgers, but it says to yours. If yours are the same as mine, there's no point. And everybody was always middle class and, and handsome and everything. And uh, we, th we thought we should take it into a different area. And I think that uh, during that period of us desperately trying to, to break the middle class, uh, beautiful teeth mold of commercials, we... Uh, we went to, um, to Leeds, and I finally found those kids, Hello, actually, in a regular, normal school. Right. I've brought little friends to see you, in they lovely? Sit, Rebel. Sit. Oh, look, Ben. He wants a piece of beef burger. He'll have to want. Ah, oh, go on. I sometimes sneak him a piece at our house. Ah, but your mum's beef burger's a different kettle of fish. To suddenly hear a Yorkshire accent coming out of a little kid in a commercial was totally and utterly unique. It's pretty silly now when you think how normal it is. But in those days, it's, it was a complete and utter breakthrough. Are you coming to my party tomorrow, then? Can't I play football? But we're having your favourites, then. Beef burgers. Well, I'm going to have beef burgers. Ben, your beef burgers are getting cold. <sighs> well, except for the ones my mum buys. Guten Tag, ich war Uwe Seute, Nasser Zero, bis mir mein Frau diesen Remington Microscreen geschenkt hat. Ich war so beeindruckt. Das ist der Firma gekauft habe. Hello, I like this Remington Microscreen rechargeable shaver so much, I bought the company. It shaves as close as a blade, or I'll give you your money back. First of all, I tried it. I flipped over it. I had no idea that it shaved as close as it did. Introducing the new Remington Microscreen Ultimate with the exclusive beard lifter. I said to myself, I'm going to run a worldwide marketing campaign. We're going to come up with the best one. One of the agency guys actually comes that came out of a deep thought process. He said, you know, that's not a bad idea, and we'll get Kevin Keegan to do it. I said, well, uh, who's going to believe that Kevin Keegan walked off the street and bought a company like Remington? I said, if we're going to do it, the only person who can do it is me. I like the product so much. I bought the company. To get a really close shave from a blade or electric, you have to stretch your skin until now. The Remington Microscreen Rechargeable Shaver shaves as close as a blade or your money back. I ended up doing the commercials in all the languages of the countries that we went to. And people would say, do you speak the language? I said, no. Uh, and they said, how can you do it? I said, well, I can't do it unless I try. Hello. Bonjour. J'étais toujours un devote de rasoir à l'âme jusqu'à ma femme m'a donné le rasoir électrique. Remington. Kadishiwa, Watashiga, Remington Microsheen Shavasta, Taiyan Kiniri, Kaishiwo, Kayatori Mashta. I can't smile, everybody, please. Smile. Waste of time if you haven't taken a light reading. Really. It's all right. This Olympus is completely automatic. It works out the light. You just click the shutter. Oh, it's okay for snaps, but just you try and margin them. You see, the trouble with these small cameras is the lens. No problem. It's a Seiko lens. They use it on the Olympus OM-1, one of the best cameras in the world. Well, I suppose they're all right for you boys, but you wouldn't get a professional using one. Do you know who that is? Who? David Bailey. David Bailey? Who's he? The Olympus trip. So simple, anyone can use it. Mm -hmm. 
was quite difficult to take eggs seriously. I mean, I remember sitting round a board table and all these rather powerful men in suits, so all sitting round, cluck, 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 little chicken there, little egg for me. I haven't had one since Easter and I want one for my tea and I would laugh and they hated you laughing, you see. Eggs is cheap. We were using well-known figures and somebody had the idea of asking Tony Hancock to present an egg commercial. I sold me soul. I've been bought. Advertising was considered as really very vulgar and really rather low and if you were reduced to doing it, especially as somebody, an, a, an actor or a well-known person, it was seen as rather, rather a disgrace and he certainly felt it as such and I felt just terribly sorry somehow asking him to do it. Owing to the present state of the theatrical profession, I have with great reluctance been forced to accept a job as a supporting actor to a lady doing a commercial for eggs. <laughs> oh, here she is now. I find as his housekeeper, eggs is easy. Just as well with her cooking them. Oh yes, there's a lot more goodness in eggs than people realise. Happiness is egg shaped. Pardon? Happiness is egg shaped. Get a bit of glamour in, they said. Dear, oh dear. Happiness is egg shaped. This year, thousands of you will have to travel to your business meetings in weather like this. Why risk driving? People said that it was preposterous what I was doing and um, you know, I'd never, I'd never, I'd never achieve any, 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 any success. No one would give me any work. At the time, it was a disaster for me that and I was like a failure. And I was like about, I think I was about, you know, 32 or something at the time. And I remember standing at, on the platform at Piccadilly Circus and looking at the railway line. <laughs> and considering throwing myself on it. I got this phone call from a very successful copywriter and he said, look, I've got this script for you. I think he was doing it out of the charity of his heart, really, or he just thought that if I give it to this bloke, he's gonna work like night and day on doing something here. On the train. Anytime you choose, take off your shoes, rest you with the eyes. Catch up with me, a favorite book, a perfect company to rely. I shot, I don't know, like a 100,000 feet of film, which was, I had no idea what I was doing, to be p p perfectly honest at the time. And, um, well, I just, I knew what I was doing. I was just making damn sure that this was going to be a fantastic, successful thing. To me, it was a good exercise in putting authentic-looking people in front of the camera, and, but showing them in an artistic way. There was a very heavy voiceover on the original script about talking about British Rail and about what they were trying to do and all this kind of stuff. And I thought that you know that it, the whole thing should be a kind of a mood. At number 75, it's the chocolate bar that thinks it can make you a managing director, an expert in meditation, or some sort of world champion athlete. That helps you work, rest, and play. You see, I was standing outside my mouse hole the other day, when all of a sudden, along comes this cat. So quick as a flash, I turned into a dog. A rough, rough. But the cat turned into a dragon. Wow. So I turned into a fire engine. How's that? <laughs> and then, and then he turned into a submarine. So I became a submarine-eating kipper. I said, a kipper, not a slipper. Thank you very much. <laughs> but he turned into an anti-kipper ballistic missile. So I turned into a missile cruncher. Crunch, 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 crunch. Just in time to see him change into a very, very big elephant. So do you know what I did then? I turned back into a mouse, and I did the threat of his life. Just like that. <laughs> well, that's it for this stretch of the 100 Greatest TV Ads. Just sit back and relax. And after the break, get ready to soak up some more installments of 30 Second Theatre.
Some cars used to be such a waste of space. Nooks and crannies all over the shop. So those know-alls at Vauxhall thought, why not take all this useless space and make it useful? And by using computer technology, they believe their range of Vauxhall estates have done just that. And yes, they're very spacious. Because inside here isn't. But look, still lots of room for improvement. Mm. Vauxhall, raising the standard. Well, it's after nine, so I guess the kids are in bed, because it's them I want to talk to you about. Nobody knows your kids like you do. No one would want to. Which is why, with the parental controls on AOL, it really is you, the parents, who stay in control. Make a nice change. You see, you can set different internet controls for a teenager than for an under-12, say. And it's so easy to set up, isn't it? I managed it. And it doesn't get much easier than that. You'll probably want to know more. So give us a call on 0800 756 9999. It's free and all part of the service at AOL. Step one, apply firm finger rotation pressure to the scalp. Step two, begin the interlinked double hand percussion to the head. Step three, Take out a nationwide mortgage and visualize many blissful years of excellent rates. Relax. It's nationwide. Caesar is proud to give you alias Maximus. Win the crowd and you'll win your freedom. At my signal, unleash hell. Radiator. It's all happening down at the home base paint department. Bathroom. Like up to 20% off all Dulux coloured paint. Neil, dining room. Kitchen, hallway. And an amazing new range of home base paints. The inside of my shed. Which have been independently tested. Hey, this iris emulsion's proven to have unbeatable covering power. I know. Bedroom. Neil. Certainly was unbeatable covering power, Neil. Home base, where you go for paint. I'll get me a brush. Julie, you've got to do it. It's now or never. I want to, but I'm afraid. Don't worry, I'll be right here with you. You'll be fine. Just hold on tight. Pepper. Okay. To try it is to love it. When I left you it's now 45. Now 45. That's what I call music. And now we're proud to present the greatest ad of all time. If your message isn't getting to the right people at the right time. It doesn't matter how good it is. Welcome back from our enforced break. Were there any modern classics in those three minutes of pleasure? Any zeitgeist-defining moments? Any post-Barthesian semiotics? Or was it just Neil Morrissey larking about in some superstore? Never mind, time to check out the next ad in our top 100 list. Murray Mitts, Murray Mitts, too good to hurry Mitts. Treat yourself to Murray Mitts, the too good to hurry Mitts. I couldn't wash up without my fairy liquid. Long before she was with men behaving badly, Leslie Ash was behaving very sweetly indeed with Mummy in the kitchen. Hands that do dishes is at number 72. Haven't these people heard of a dishwasher? Here's your bottle back. Thank you. It's lovely for Skittles. It's lovely for hands, too. Now hands that do dishes can feel soft as your face with mild green fairy liquid. We've got 
lots of phone calls from people wanting the spot for various reasons, usually colleges and universities. But the most interesting was from a chap who was up for trial at the Old Bailey, and he wanted a copy of the ad to uh, use in his defence. We never heard whether he got off or not. It was probably the most intelligent commercial I've ever been involved in. And The Guardian was saying, look, you know, we can give it to you this way, we can give it to you that way, but you know, we let you make up your own mind. We were using rubber bricks and some thugs from the buildings that we were shooting in got hold of these bricks. And they started to throw them at passers-by and there was all sorts of commotion and the police. And I mean, it was just like a nightmare, but the commercial turned out pretty good. An event seen from one point of view gives one impression. Seen from another point of view, it gives quite a different impression. But it's only when you get the whole picture you can fully understand what's going on. Baby, I will be Believe it or not, this groovy bear was inspired by Jack Nicholson, an easy rider. Honest. Cresta is at number 70. A bottle or a can. <laughs> It's Friday, man. As a kid, I would pester my mum to buy Cresta just because of the ad and in spite of, of my actual disgust with the product. <whistles> it was uh, undrinkable, really. It was an awful kind of textured drink. <whistles> it was like baby food mixed with Andrew's liver salts. It had a horrible kind of awful, awful kind of chemical feeling as it went down your throat, but it was great colours, it was really bright colours, and it had the cool bear. Here's one bear that just can't get enough, it's Frothy Man. It was bold and it was different and it was outrageous. But as a result of it, everyone thought they could do something great. You kind of knew that it was going to be, it was going to really kind of freak people out. So like when we saw Lenny come out of the Winnebago with his nipple clamps on, it was like, oh. People of the old cliches, you're driving along and a, and a kid steps out in front of you. And you just have to, that's the time when you really need your tyres, you have to swerve right around and avoid the kid. So we thought, take that kind of cliche and put it into a completely different context. When I work, um, I kind of plan everything out, and then I then I kind of um, um, throw it all away. There I was standing on a bridge with a piano that had just been driven by some, you know, pollution brother of mine, and um, I decided um, to. I, I just thought it was only natural that we should throw the piano off the bridge. <laughs> yeah, and we did it. And it, you know, thankfully, due to the laws of gravity, you know, you throw the thing in the air and it kind of, and it flies down and it, you know, landed roughly where, I, you know, we thought it might land. <laughs> I was trying to pretend that I was an artist. And I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll take the Dunlop commercial, and I'll take it outside the Tate gallery, and I'll just ask people, well, what do you think of that? Do you think it, do you think it could potentially be inside the gallery? It's an ad that wants to be arty, that wants to be deep. And in, it's like Charlie Parker playing with strings. You know, he just misunderstood his genius. Ad makers shouldn't want to be Hamlet. You know, that's the really point, you know. Really good ad makers, we should sort of honour. What we shouldn't expect them is to be able to write Shakespeare. I see films like that as like a creative sacrifice that other, that be other better films will get made elsewhere. And some people have to, you know, 
run across the minefield and get a little bit injured so that others can traipse in their, in their footsteps. <laughs> Yes, lass. Gary Baldies, please. The Telsid campaign, which is about selling shares, is, of course, very much of the 80s, because the 80s was about privatisation, and therefore you wanted to get people to buy shares in things like British Gas. Now, the way you did that, of course, was to sell the idea that you weren't selling this to big corporations and so on. You were selling them to the little people. If you see said, tell him, will you? So what you do is you, you make your British gas privatisation ad as far away from the city as possible. You set it somewhere in the fictional highlands and islands. If you see Sid, will you tell him that? And there you have a whole set of very positive little people. You never know who Sid is. It's just kept open-ended in that way, which makes it a very clever advertisement but actually, I think, an advertisement which uh, uh, was a long way from the truth. How long are you staying? About a week. What the advert is saying, this is fine, this is lovely, this is homely. This is not what it actually was about, was making fat cats very rich. I'll best be off then, love. If you see Sid, will you tell him? Aye. Super Trinitron wide. Be careful what you watch. Hello, Tosh got a Toshiba. Hello, Tosh got a Toshiba. That's an FST. That's an FST. It's the flattest, squarest tube. It's the flattest, squarest tube. They ain't half built well. They ain't half built well. Of course, every Toshiba component is stronger to last longer. Know what I mean? That's good. That's good. Hello, Tosh got a Toshiba. Hello, Tosh got a Toshiba. Well, I have a word with your mum. Come, birds, oh, is the name. They chose about 20 of us and sent us down to the Cutty Sark. And we, uh, we didn't have a beard, which I didn't. They stuck one on. And I came to the edge of the, ga uh, the gangway and you had to go, hoi and a har and ooh, har and all that uh, rubbish. <coughs> well, I had two rules for myself. Uh, stay out of the sun for as long as possible, because you had to stand in, in the blaze, the full blaze of the sun, and stay away from the children, because ch children are merciless. <laughs> if I sat down, uh, I always felt my back to see if there was a notice on the back to say, kick me or something. So, give them bird's eye, cod, big fingers. Hey, shipmates! <laughs> They're the fun. <laughs> You know who's tonic water has a secret of shh. Pour it. See how its strength bursts to the top of the glass. Taste it. The difference is almost frightening. There was a series called Top Secret, which was set in South America. It was pre-Bond, it was pre-Avengers. I was a British agent to help deal with corruption and espionage that was going on. And out of that, Schweppes grew. We were left alone to get on and shoot commercials for eight or nine years. Some people serve the strangest tonic water. Ah! 
Only you know whose tonic water has the secret of shh. Nobody researched anything. There were no... I use this next word very carefully, focus groups. And the good manners not to spoil good gin. <coughs> it must have been something he had. The parrot was a stuffed parrot. <coughs> I thought I'd mention that for those who think, did they kill a parrot for that? I found it the road from coast to coast. Yorkie and me rolling on. According to people who claim to know about these things, the Yorkie ads are supposed to be revolutionary. This was the first time chocolate had been marketed at men. Uh, I don't know if that can be true. What had men eat before that for a snack? They can't have just always had like raw meat. Good, rich, and thick, a milk chocolate brick. But certainly what looks antiquated about it now is its conception of the, of the lorry driver as this amiable, cheery knight of the road, you know, chewing on his chocolate bar instead of high cholesterol, bacon and egg, you know, four o'clock in China Richard's services and amphetamines to keep him awake and worse. And uh, there's no road rage in it, he's looking very calm and, and obviously his lorry's full of Yorkies rather than um, you know, an entire family of Romanian gypsies that he's bringing over to uh, avoid the terrible political system. So when I still that big old mill, there's plenty more in store for me from that chunky bar of mine. Round trees Yorkie, chunky milk chocolate. Face ad it was all in the preparation, in the, in the rehearsal of the people, all the kids we used. We shot it in Utah, in the desert state of America. We had a fantastic organizer for, for um, moving people around, uh, somebody who does all the Olympic Games, you know, there's all those things, those, mo those movements, crowd movements in stadiums. So she's like a dancer. 50 steps. We're going 50 steps, everybody. 50 steps. Just keep it moving. Going up the beach. Keep going. The back end, lower left, needs to tighten up. Just keep it moving. Shapes look good now. They just really need to concentrate on maintaining the, the shape. And from the credit goes to the people who are, who are forming the face, not to me or to the pilot, or to the, to the cameraman. It goes to those kids, they're all school kids from local schools, that they were able to actually form a face, form an eye, wink, and form the earth, all out of rehearsal. Oh. 